Anything else? All right. Well, we're going to finish off this series before we go into Thanksgiving called Thankful. Uh, I want to invite you to turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to look at a passage of scripture there that we've actually gone over before in here. But I wanted to really look at it as we go into this Thanksgiving weekend. I hope for you that Thanksgiving is something pretty incredible for you. I hope it's something where, where the things that you're thankful for, all of a sudden they, like, they come alive to you. They, they, they move from black and white to color and they just come, they begin to come out so that it's not just a day where you're eating a lot of food. It's not just a day where the Cowboys are winning a football game. It's not just a long weekend for you, right? I hope it's a day where you you really get to the root of the holiday and you go, oh, well, Thanksgiving, it's, it's a time that we give thanks. And most of all, that we give thanks to God for, for all the various reasons that we have and those that we mentioned today. And that's the idea behind this. Now listen, I'm going to tell you this. I'm glad to give you guys an opportunity to speak this morning because you're probably not going to like this sermon. I'm going to be honest with you. It's a little, it's a little rough. You're going to kind of, listen, I'm going to tell you up front. You're going to feel like I'm doing this a little bit. And that's because I am. Okay? There, there are some things, it's like there are times to, to, to be encouraging, and I hope that this is in some ways encouraging to you. But there are also times to, to kind of have that like you are here moment and for us to sit back and go, you know, that actually makes some sense. And you know what? I, gotta, I, I, I need to move in this direction. I need to do this thing. And, and uh so I hope that this is helpful for you. I also could see how this particular message might feel, might make some people feel like, gosh, I think that guy was just kind of yelling at me like all morning. And so, you know, before we go into that, before we get into the message, I just want to let you know that and just tell you like, hey, I love you. You guys are great. You're wonderful. And, and our job as, as shepherds here, whether it's Pastor Sean, Pastor Anna, or myself, is to, to teach, to help. To say, yeah, I know, you know, the same thing as you with your kids. You're like, I know you don't like what I'm saying to you now, but listen, it'll save your life. Yeah, we have one of our little kids, we're, we're just talking about a story. One of, the, one of our little kids, not mine, I don't have any kids, uh, but one of the little kids of the church stuck two wires in an electrical socket. And, and it, it, it burned their fingers because they completed the circuit. And it burned their fingers. Like it literally like lit up the wire that they were sticking in there. Uh, it lit it up. And it, they've got like little you know, scars on their fingers or whatever. And, and if you saw that, if that was about to happen, you'd be like, no! And you'd knock it down real quick, right? And they'd be like, oh, why do you, you know, some kids are like, oh, you scared me. Why'd you yell at me and blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, it's like, I'm doing it for your good. So just remember that when, when it feels like your, your pastors are doing this to you, or it feels like that, we're not really maybe, but, but it feels like that, just remember, like, we're not, we care for you. We want you to have the best that God says, I've come not just to give you life, but life to the full. The, I've come to give you not just life, but the abundant life. And, and your pastors are just trying to get alongside him and, and help you in that. All right? Amen? Okay, remember you said that. All right. Let's, uh, let's pray a little bit before we get into the scriptures. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for all the, the people that are here, the body, the community that we have, not just here in this building, Father, but places where people are at home right now. Uh, where people are, Father, in different parts of the country or in, even in different countries, Father, that join this community to make it what it is. And I thank you for giving it to us and giving us to it, Father. Help us to find our place and our purpose in the lives that you have surrounded us with, Lord. And bless us this morning, Father, that we would hear from you, that we wouldn't just hear someone saying things that, that sound like they're scolding us or something like that. But, Father, we, we hear the encouraging voice of the Holy Spirit saying, I'm just trying to get you out of this trap. Father, bless this time with your voice. We ask these things for your glory, and in Jesus' name, amen. All right, are you ready? We're going to have to go through this fast. Are you ready? Buckle up. Okay, here we go. Ephesians chapter 5 says this, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. This is one of the apostles, and he's talking to Christians. He's telling them, you know, you... You used to be not Christians, and then you came to realize that Jesus is Lord, and you surrendered your life to him. You realized Jesus is God. You gave your life to him, and now your life should be different. And he's kind of encouraging them, here's the ways that your life should be different. Here's the, here's the ways that you now live in light of this giant reality that there is a God and that his name is Jesus. Okay? So he says, you are once darkness, 
But now you are light in the world. Do you realize that, church? If you are a Christian, the Bible says you are a light to the world. You're meant to light the world up. It does get pretty dark out there. And we're not meant to add to the darkness. We're meant to light it up. It says, live as children of the light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And here, and find out what pleases the Lord. Find out what pleases the Lord. Man, I think that's so important in the scriptures because it's not meant for us to just kind of live by instinct. I think this is the way it is. I think this is what God would like. It says, find out. Search the scriptures and figure out who God is and how God is and what makes him happy. Surround yourself with people that can help you when you're like, well, my instinct says this. And people are like, yeah, but the Bible says this. I know we don't like that. We don't ever like anybody to kind of be correcting us. But it says, find out what pleases the Lord, meaning that not all of it comes naturally. And sometimes as Christians, we want to live by our instincts. We're like, I think this is good. It seems good to me. It seems good to the people around me, so it must be good. It says, find out what pleases the Lord. You've got to do some work. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, much less to also engage in it. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. And everything that is illuminated, uh, illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, and this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It just speaks to me. It sounds so poetic, but also it just, I want you to listen to this when I read it. And I want you to think about what it might be saying to you. It says, this is why it is said, wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead. And Christ will shine on you. Man, I want you to just take that in for a second. Maybe in some area of your life, God is speaking this to you right now. And there's a, there's a translation that I really like, and it sounds just even more poetic. It says, wake up, O sleeper. Arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Man, right now as you're in church, as you're getting ready to head into a weekend where you're supposed to be giving thanks to God and then a season where we celebrate God's love to us by giving his son, where have you fallen asleep? Where is it like you just keep hitting the snooze button and God's like, get up. Wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. You want his favor? You want his blessing? You want his presence in your life? Wake up. He'll shine on you, it says. Next slide. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every, because the days are evil. Making the most of every opportunity, and I want to talk about that today. We'll go through it hopefully very quickly. Making the most of every opportunity. I want to talk about that. We should be grateful. As you head into Thanksgiving, I hope you're grateful for opportunities because they're surrounding you. They're always there. And I want to talk about a few different categories. There are obviously tons, but I just want to talk about four. Four opportunities that we should be grateful for. Number one, we should be grateful to be able to grow. The opportunity to grow. Listen, you're not stuck where you're at. I know that some of you right now, you feel like that. You feel like you're stuck in place. You're like, oh, it's been like this for years. It's always going to be like this. I I can't see a way out. I can't see the circumstances changing. You're not stuck where you're at because you're in a relationship with the almighty God who can do anything. And even when you feel stuck and you're like, these circumstances are awful, God's like, yes, but I can take awful circumstances and I can change them into something wonderful. You have an opportunity to grow. And let me tell you something. Some of you are missing it. You are sitting down. You're sitting on your hands. And God is saying to you and has been saying, wake up, sleeper. I want to do this in your life. I want to change this in your life. I want to move you from here to here. And you're like, I'll get to that. One of these days, January 1st. 
you have the opportunity to grow. You don't have to be the same. You don't have to be saddled with who you are now. In fact, something incredible happened when you gave your life to Christ. The Bible says you became a new creation. And you begin to grow from that. And you decide whether you grow back into your old habits or whether you embrace the new habits that God is offering you and become the person you were always made to be. And some of you, by the choices you're making, are saying, I'm really, really comfortable with the old. I want the access that the new gives me. I want to get into heaven. But I really like my old habits. You have an opportunity to grow. In fact, the Bible says whether you're working on, it or want, working on it or not, God is working in you to make you more and more like Jesus all the time. And he says, I want you to join me in that work. Man, where is God saying to you, this is a direction I want to go. This is how we want to grow. Where is an area in your life where you're saying like, you probably wouldn't say it this way, but you're just, you're sitting on your hands. You're hitting the snooze button. The ways, sometimes the ways that God wants us to grow seem like work. It seems like, oh, God, you just want me to do some more religious stuff. Oh, God, you just want me to do these things. And I just, it's too much work. It's too hard. But the ways that God wants you to grow are the answers to your prayers that you sometimes just don't see. And they're also the answers to the prayers around you. God is not just trying to grow you just because he's like, I just like to do stuff and I like to keep busy. God has reasons. He's saying, man, you need to be this person because at this time you're going to meet this person. And they need you. Man, be thankful for the opportunity to grow. You're not stuck. How many people have ever felt stuck in their life like your finances, your habits, your, your DNA, your whatever? You're not stuck. You're not stuck. You might not be working with God, so you're not moving forward sometimes. But you're not stuck. God says, I'm with you. Even when you can't see it, I'm in the background working. Digging you out. Sometimes your circumstances make it look like you're stuck. And God's like, I have you exactly where I want you to be. And I don't need you to move. I need you to grow. I put you in these circumstances for a reason. You think, we talked about Joseph. Joseph in jail, he's like, oh my gosh, how long do I have to be in jail? I never did anything wrong. And my life has been so awful. And he's like, God, get me out. And God's like, I have you exactly where you need to be. I have some appointments for you. Don't worry about moving out of these circumstances. Worry about growing into the man you're supposed to be. The person you're supposed to be. Be grateful for the opportunity to grow and stop wasting it. Stop waiting. Start moving. Next slide. Uh, the opportunity of tomorrow, and you mentioned this. The opportunity of tomorrow. Here's the thing. So many of us, were, you're stuck living in the past. You're like, ah, oh, I've always done this, so I'll always do this. This person did this to me and it hurt. And you just, you kind of live in that moment. But the Bible is saying, man, God's mercies are new every day. Do this for me. Let's just do a, the, an exercise real quick. Do this. Breathe in. Deeply. Breathe out. Breathe out kind of, like, don't breathe out a lot because we're in the COVID season. But like, breathe, yeah. breathe in, breathe out. You realize what that is? You just took a breath. Every breath that you take is a physical representation of the grace God has given you. Because God says, hey man, no matter what has happened to you in the past, no matter what you've done in the past, if you repent, if you confess, I forgive. So that means every breath you take, when you're like, oh, I'm still alive. Like right now, raise your hand if you're still alive. If you, you take a moment, think about it, I'm, you're still alive. Even Wes raised his hand on that. That's incredible. It's a miracle right now. Write that down. What's the day? November 21st? Write that down. You're still alive, and that means you still have the opportunity of tomorrow. You have the opportunity for forgiveness. You have the opportunity for repentance. You have the opportunity to let go of the past and move towards what's ahead. There's a verse in the Bible that says, one thing I do, there's this guy and he's growing a lot and he's going around, he's starting a lot of churches, his name is Paul, and he says this, hey listen, I'm not perfect yet, I'm paraphrasing, I'm not perfect yet, 
But here's one thing that I do. I forget what's behind and I strain towards what's ahead. He says, man, I'm living for tomorrow. I let go of the stuff that's in the past. And some of us, you're locked into the past. Someone hurt you. Someone did something to you. Your relationship, you've been married for this many years, and because of that, you're like, oh, they always do this, and they're always like this, and they did, and there's a one time they did this, and there's a one time they did that. And it's like, man, you're missing out on tomorrow. You're missing out on the opportunity at a new day, and you're robbing someone else of it too. Let go of that and realize God has given me Right now, God has given me the next moment. I have a promise of tomorrow. When some of you are like, you're thinking ahead of me, and you're like, no, we promise, tomorrow is promised to no man. What happens if today I walk out and I get hit by a bus or whatever? It's like, guess what? God has already taken care of your tomorrow. No, I'm serious. I know it sounds like I'm joking or being sarcastic, but God has already taken care of your tomorrow. Jesus, that's why Jesus says that. He's like, don't be afraid of the person who can kill the body, and then do no more, which we're like, that's pretty much everything. And Jesus is like, that's the thing. It's not everything. There's a whole other life that's better than this life that is waiting for you, and you don't know it sometimes, but you're waiting for it. Be grateful for the opportunity of tomorrow, and even when it feels like you don't have a tomorrow, remember, you have a tomorrow. Jesus died to give you tomorrow, and tomorrow is better than today. Start using your tomorrow. Start letting go of the past and moving forward. Stop looking at yourself and saying, I've always done this, or I always will. No, tomorrow, I'm going to be better. And what's the path to get there? Well, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this. I need to stop doing that. Let go of your hurts and your wounds. The Bible is so strong on talking about forgiveness. Let go of them. You're like, I can't let go because if I let go, it means it was okay. It means it was right. I can't. It just, and the Bible's like, man, you're still hurting because of that thing that happened to you way back then. And I understand it was awful. Let it go. Someone sing it for me. You should just have Frozen running around. If you're a Christian, you should have Frozen running around in your head all the time. If you're a parent, you probably did for a couple years. Man, you have an opportunity at tomorrow. You have an opportunity to be new. You have an opportunity to be better. You have an opportunity to be healed. Be grateful for a God that says, my mercies are new every day, and I've already taken care of your tomorrow. Amen? Amen? The opportunity, next slide, of people. And, and this, is, this is one kind of, you, you, you might not like, because it's going to sound like I'm getting a little bit preachy to you, but we talked about this idea that God has placed you on the earth for a reason, and he's made you for people around you. Like you have certain gifts and certain ways of doing things and certain resources and certain experiences that have shaped your heart that make you perfect for the people that God has surrounded you with. And to top all that off, to put the cherry on top of that, most of you have become Christians. You've given your life to God, so you are in relationship with God. You have the Holy Spirit to counsel you, to guide you, to move you if you want to listen. You have, there's nothing better. I know that we always like, it's like, man, I like it when I feel good. I like it when great things happen for me. But have you ever done something great for someone else? Raise your hand if you ever did something wonderful for someone else. Doesn't that feel good? Everybody notice Wes didn't raise his hand. Everybody notice that. He's never done anything great for anyone else, which is a shame because he's a father. It feels great to do things for other people. It feels great to do things for other people. Sometimes as Christians, we're like, man, I don't understand why I'm not feeling what I should feel being a Christian. It's like, well, who are you serving? You want to feel better? Go out and serve people. God has surrounded you with people, and there's this opportunity there to, like, bring love into someone's life, to, to let someone who doesn't know that they're loved feel loved. There's opportunity to meet people's needs. The Bible talks about that. Jesus says, the son of man himself, he's talking about himself, did not come to be served, but to serve. And then he says in another passage of scripture, he says, listen, 
I'm going to serve you, and I'm setting an example for you. You should do what I have done. You have the opportunity to serve people. And, and, and this is what's tough for us as Christians, living in our particular culture. Serving seems subservient. Well, I don't want to serve them. Really, they owe me. Well, I don't want to serve them. They're not really doing anything for me. Why should I do something for them? Because you're a Christian, because you represent God's love, because that's what love is. It's giving yourself to someone else, not giving yourself to someone else because they gave them themselves to you. That's what love looks like. You serve people. You give yourself to them. And, and guess what? Let me, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes when you give yourself to people, when you're giving your heart to people, they are going to step on it. You're going to give yourself to someone, they're going to take advantage of you. That happens. You're going to give them their, your heart, and they're just going to trash it like it was nothing. That happens. And, and it hurts. But God loves you and is so proud of you. We're, you're waiting to receive their love back or their, their oh, you got to tell me thank you or you got to, you know, whatever back. And God, all the while, is like, I love it. He's in heaven shouting down, I love what you're doing there. They are stepping on your heart, and you're just loving them. I love it. You are making me so proud. You can't hear it because you're waiting to hear it from them. You have the opportunity to serve people, to make someone else's life better. You have the opportunity to lead someone else into relationship with Christ. Like, you can't save them, but you can be a part of leading them into relationship with Christ. I'm going to say something really hard. If you have a friend or a family member that died and they weren't a Christian, they're not in heaven. And, and, and I know, I know, you told yourself at the time because you were afraid to say something to them. You didn't want to share your faith. You thought it was, ah, I, was I don't want to be too pushy. And everybody has the right to decide on their own, and they do, and blah, blah, blah. And, and so you said to yourself, they were a pretty good person. And I just can't see a reality where God sends good people to hell. But the reality is that God is saying, like, no, nah, it's not about good and bad people. You're all bad. It's about being saved, and the way that you get saved is you come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. You submit yourself to Jesus Christ. And if you don't do that, the Bible says, your reality is not with him in heaven. I say that not to be mean, and I realize that that brings up, like it's not great to bring up in, in the middle of a sermon because it, it makes people mad. But I say that because we're not taking our role in this world very seriously. We have all these reasons and excuses why we're not sharing the gospel. And I don't mean that you have to run up to people and throw the Bible in their face. But we need to be more evangelistic. We need to be sharing our faith. At the very least, we need to be sharing our love, hoping it leads for an opportunity to share our faith. And if you're not doing it, you're missing out and you're robbing someone else. Because that's where God is. He's in the lives of the people around you trying to bring them into awareness. And he's saying, hey, you want my presence in your life? You want to feel me? Come join me where I'm at instead of continuing to ask me to join you where you're at. I'm trying to save this person. Well, God, I'm trying to get a raise. I'm over here trying to heal them and, and, and help them find healing. God, listen, I'm really working on this uh, vacation we're saving for next year. We've never been to Disney World. People are an opportunity to love, to show life to, to serve, to play our part into bringing them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And all of us are bound to that. Last slide. The opportunity to have a full life. So here's the thing. When God is speaking to you, God is not saying to you, hey, I want you to do stuff because I just, I like to be in control. I like to just, you know, you just talk to me and uh, I tell you what to do and you do it and that makes me feel good. God is not saying that. God is saying, I've come so that you can have life and life to the full. He wants to give you the best life possible. And, and sometimes we talk about it where we're waiting for heaven. We're just kind of, like I said earlier, sitting on our hands waiting for heaven to happen. And we're wondering why we're missing out on so much of life. Well, 
relationship with Christ is not simply about heaven. That's maybe the most important thing. But it also happens in this time. God gives us gifts in this lifetime. Identity, purpose, meaning, fulfillment, value, joy, and peace. Those things all come in a relationship with Jesus Christ. You figure out who you actually are, what you were made for, and you can only find that out from God. When you figure out what you were made for and who you are, you, you, oh, now I know what I'm about. Now I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And you kind of align yourself with the reason that you were placed on the earth in the first place. Because of that, all these things come, meaning the value, fulfillment, and they lead to joy and peace. God is trying to give us the fullest life possible. He wants to give that to you. Sometimes it looks to us like work. Sometimes it looks to us like sacrifice. But God is like, trust me, I see so much farther and wider than you do. And the things that God is calling you to, even though sometimes they're hard, you're like, he wants me to put up with that person even more. But they've already said these mean things. and They've already whatever, and I'm done with them. And the internet is telling you, remove the toxicity from your life. And you're like, yeah. And God is like, you can't see it, but man, when that person is healed, the joy that it's going to bring to your heart is going to be incredible. God sees so much farther and wider than we do. He wants to give you the best life. He's offering it to us. And how wonderful is that? Like you're in the circumstances you're in and you're sitting there and you're going, man, if it was the way sometimes we think about it, like, it, man, just this life, and you just got to trudge through it until heaven comes, and hopefully it comes while I'm sleeping, kind of thing. What a, that's just awful. But what if you woke up every morning, and you're like, God is on my side. God is with me. God is speaking to me. God is teaching me. And he wants to not only that, but today he wants to give me the best life possible. He wants to lead me to where life is best. That's an opportunity for you. You should be grateful for it. Music team, you can come on up. Man, I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm so glad we have a a holiday called Thanksgiving. That kind of remind us sometimes. Don't you kind of get a little bit overwhelmed with it's like, you know, there's tough stuff going on sometimes in our lives. And in fact, I kind of feel like for most of us, there's kind of always tough stuff going on, right? You know, it doesn't sometimes feel it's like, I never get a break. Like one thing fixes, you're like, okay, good, finally. We had the money aside. We finally, you know, we fixed the, the, our, our car. And now it runs the way it's supposed to run. And then you go to flush the toilet and it's like. Blah, 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 blah. You're like, are you serious? And a few of those things happen in a row and you're like, okay, seriously, when is this going to end? We need a holiday like Thanksgiving to go like, oh, man, I totally forgot. I'm only looking at the toilet. I forgot that there's a house that that toilet is in. I forgot that house comes with heating and air conditioning. I forgot I've got TV in the internet, and even though we were locked down for like a year, it's like I could stream. I, I watch so much TV and movies. For some of you really good people, like I read so much of the Bible. We need a holiday like Thanksgiving, but we need to be prepared for it. You don't just go into it and be like, oh my gosh, I love Thanksgiving because I like deviled eggs. I like those eggs that people make. Right? You'll miss it, man. You'll miss it. There's this grounding that's going to happen at Thanksgiving. If you want to be grounded in it that says, oh my gosh, I want to be connected to the Lord. I want my life to be connected to him. I want the things that I see to be connected to him. The things I'm grateful for, I want to look back and say, God, every good and perfect gift comes from you. And I want you to know that I know that. And you want to be set free from all the broken stuff that's happening in your life that you're concentrating on, you need something else to go like, oh yeah, what a great holiday we have coming up. Be ready for it. Use it appropriately. It's not just a long weekend. It's time to connect you to God. It's time to connect your life to God. It's time to to seize all the opportunities that are out there, to be aware of them and begin to seize them, to really start a new day with God. Like God wakes up every day and he's like, you're a new creation and my mercies are new every day. And you should wake up and go, and today I'm new. Today's gonna be a new day. I'm gonna throw off the old habits. I'm gonna do new stuff today. 
And, and if you fail a little bit, if you stumble a little bit, if you fall down a little bit, and you're like, well, I thought it was going to be a new day, but then I fell right back into that rut that I usually get in. You know what? How wonderful. The next day is a new day too. And in fact, you don't even have to wait for the next day to start. The next moment is a new day for you. That's what God says. My mercies are new constantly. Amen? Hey, there is opportunity out there waiting for you. Opportunity to grow. God is saying, wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead. I want to shine on you. Where are you sitting on your hands? Where do you need to grow? Where have you been hitting the snooze button forever? God's like, let's deal with this. And you're like, eh. opportunity in tomorrow. It's a new day. There's opportunity in the people around you. People need you to be who God made you to be, and people need you to love them the way God loves them. And that'll bring not only healing and joy and potentially relationship with Christ into their lives, but it'll bring healing and joy into your life as well. last three weeks we've talked about a lot of stuff take it in do it the areas where God is poking at you and I know that he is do it don't put it on the shelf don't write it in your bulletin I know we don't make bulletins anymore it's kind of an idea but and then just put it on the shelf stick it in your Bible put it on the shelf and feel like oh I did it because I wrote it down so I obviously have kind of memorialized it in some way do it do it Make the end of this year the best start to next year. God is, God is calling to you. God is wanting so deeply to love you. And God is wanting so deeply to love through you. Join him.